Let's talk about life tables and withdrawals. In the previous video, we talked about a hypothetical study where participants could only leave through death. But that's not a very realistic scenario because in reality, study participants come and leave throughout the duration of a study. The reasons for leaving the study can be varying from no longer being interested to moving to a different city and so forth. So we also have to learn how these withdrawals are handled in a life table. Understanding this concept is super important also for later when we're going to talk about Kaplan-Maya curves. So let's take another hypothetical study population. The study's duration is four years. The second column depicts the number of participants alive and present at the beginning of each year. The third column indicates the number of participants who died during that year and the fourth column indicates how many participants withdrew during that year. So 500 people joined at the outset, 223 died during the first year and 24 withdrew. So we're left with 253 at the beginning of year 2 since 500 minus 223 minus 24 equals 253. Make sense so far? Now in order to calculate the proportion of participants who died in each year, we need to know the number of people who died in that year and divide that by the number of people at risk in that year, right? We know the number who died, but how many people were at risk, let's say, during year 1? We know that 500 joined at the beginning of that year, but we also know that 24 left throughout the year. So what are we to do? Well, in this situation we make an assumption. We assume that all people who left did so uniformly throughout the year. And if they left uniformly, 12 left in the first half of the year and 12 left in the second half. So on average, half of these 24 were at risk throughout the year. So the number at risk is the number alive at the beginning of that year minus half of the withdrawals. So for the first year, that would be 500 minus 24 divided by 2 or 500 minus 12 and that equals 488. Please stop the video and make the calculations for year 2 to 4 yourself and then come back. Okay, so here are the correct numbers. Did you get them right? Now let's calculate the proportions of people who died during each year. We said the proportion of people who died is calculated by dividing the number of people who died by the number of people at risk in that year. So for year 1, that would be 223 divided by 488 and that's 0.457 or 46%. Please pause the video again and make the calculations for years 2, 3 and 4 yourself and then come back. Okay, so these are the correct numbers. Now let's take the next step. The next step in the process is to calculate the proportion of participants who survived in each year. And that, as you can imagine, is calculated as 1 minus the proportion of participants who died. So for year 1, this would be 1 minus 0.457, which equals 0.543, or 53%. Again, please stop the video and calculate the proportions for years 2, 3, and 4 yourself. Then come back. And here are the correct numbers. I hope you got them right. Now comes the final step in the process and that's to calculate the cumulative survival from the start of the study to the end of each year of follow-up. You've already learned how to do that in one of our previous videos. It's by multiplying the proportions of the individual years. So surviving from the start of the study to the end of year 1 is the same as surviving year 1. So that's 0.543. Surviving from the start of the study until the end of year 2 is 0.543 times 0.546 and that's 0.297. So around 30% of the study's participants survived the first two years. Now again, please stop the video and calculate the cumulative proportions for each year yourself, then come back. So these are the numbers. You see that 5-year survival in this study population is 16.4%. These cumulative percentages could be nicely depicted in a survival curve if need be.